welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. Uh, this uh, segment today is one of two, really, uh, and I'll get more back to that more, more later in the talk. Uh, the title of this is Beyond Normalcy. Uh, normalcy is a word that, by the way, is uh, a little bit uh, on the shaky side, but I prefer, prefer that word. But we have to determine what is normal. Normal goes from one way deep to another one way out. Uh, but, uh, and it also is the perception of the listener and the talker. Uh, so uh, I want you to be uh, aware of that. But uh, I have a little bit of a humorous story to tell you uh, about normal and uh, abnormal. I, it, was, it happened when I was uh, studying for my master's degree at a small school in Nebraska. Uh, the teacher, uh, I took a psychology course, had to take it. And uh, the teacher was excellent. And he was in just getting into use of electronics. He could film his interviews with a patient. I mean, he was a real psychologist uh, besides teaching at the, at the uh, university I was at. And so he had the real life thing uh, that, uh, as, a, as a psychologist. Well, he showed us two uh, interviews one day. And in the first interview, they talk back and forth. And then uh, he asked the, uh, the man there, married man, and he said, uh, how's your sex life? I mean, he wasn't nosing into it. He was trying to learn about the individual. And the, the man said, well, uh, I think it's pretty normal, uh, about once a month. And uh, that was normal to him. Then he brings in a second man. And he asks him the same uh, question. And the man thinks for a while and he says, uh, I'm pretty normal, we're pretty normal, uh, about four or five times a week. And uh, of course, uh, the difference is tremendous, but a lot of times we, we, de we describe normal as can be on one end of the scale or the, or the other. And we have to determine that uh, in our own work uh, as a basketball coach. Unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but coaches tend to accept normal. The gist of this session today and the next one is to try to show coaches, players, whoever watches it, uh, normal is not what you want to accept. You want to be above it. You want to be higher. Uh, and don't, and they don't take the short or easy road just because, uh, and, and say that you are normal when you know you're not normal and when you know you're not trying to get to the best. Well, <clears throat> I watch a lot of practices and I think that, that that disturbs me as much as anything that there isn't a real emphasis on high level. And the story I'm about to tell you partially and read uh, a little bit of it is a story that I've used quite a bit in Basketball Talk Pro, but you can't, you can read this story over and over again. You can't, uh, you still will learn uh, more. The story takes place uh, a, a university professor from Germany gets an assignment to teach at a university in uh, Japan. This was prior uh, to World War I even. 
the, the, the professor is interested in learning about Zen, which is big in Japan. And uh, they tell him that the best way to learn Zen is to study one of the arts. He chooses archery. And the master of that uh, business, or the, the, uh, the building that they're in, uh, is one of the masters of Japan. Very, very high level uh, master. Uh, in the, as the story goes, uh, it comes up that the master tells the archers, you don't aim, uh, you don't even see the, the target. The professor takes that and says, how can you hit it if you don't see it? And he said, I don't see it, it doesn't make any difference, trying to show him uh, the, the real art of archery, or, or all of his students. Uh, and so the, the uh, student says, well then, you could hit it blindfolded. The, the master doesn't care for that statement. He looks him right in the eye, finally quietly says, come and see me this evening. And so the, the um, professor does. He goes in and the master is sitting in, uh, on a, a pillow, sipping tea. The, the, the student comes in and uh, sits across from him. The master offers him tea and they sit like that. No one talks for quite a while. And then finally, and this, uh, this I'll read. At last the master rose and made me a sign to follow him. At, at the practice hall was brightly lit. The master told me to put a taper, long and thin as a knitting needle, in the sand below the target stand. It was so dark in the stand that I could not even see the outlines and if the tiny flame of the taper had not been there, I might perhaps have guessed the position of the target, though I could not have made it out with any precision. The master danced the ceremony. His first arrow shot out of dazzling brightness into the deep night. I knew from the sound that it had hit the target. The second arrow was a hit too. When I switched on the light in the target stand, I discovered to my amazement that the first arrow was lodged full in the middle of the block, the bullseye, while the second arrow had splintered the butt of the first and plowed through the shaft before embedding itself beside it. I did not dare to pull the arrows out separately, but carried them back together with the target. The master surveyed them critically. The first shot, he said, was no great feat. You will think because after all these years I am so familiar with my target stand that I must know even in pitch darkness where the target is. That may be and I won't try to pretend otherwise, the master still was talking, but the second arrow, which hit the first, what do you make of that? I, and these are critical words, I at any rate know that it is not I who must be given credit for this shot. It shot, and it made the hit. We will go into that part a, a lot more. Uh, that statement is very important to the lesson to be learned here um, because it's spiritual. And we will go into that eventually. Not much today, but if, when we uh, are in our second uh, session. 
I think you should know and read the book. This that story was taken out of the Intelligent Coach, which you maybe maybe have and have read uh, the story. Uh, I think you should uh, know the sto the book that uh, that story was taken out of, and it's called Zen in the Art of Archery. The author is a man named Hegel, H-E-G-T-E-L-L. -L. Uh, I, I, I tell every coach that's a must read for them, but it's a difficult read and it's going to be difficult for them to understand until they have read it four or five times. I have read that book probably eight to ten times. I still find something every time uh, I read it. It's worth your time, uh, and, tr and, to, and it is also worth your time to understand it. Listen, study what they're saying, thinking. Do not be blind and just say, well, I don't like that stuff, I wouldn't do that. Uh, be open to learning, uh, to putting things into the right perspective, and to understand the depth of the knowledge we are talking about. Very few people get any depth at all. They build on what they see uh, and they don't see the depth that goes on beyond it. I hope that by the second session you will understand what, I'm, uh, what I am saying. In the book the intelligent coach in the section of learning. Uh, there are five steps to learning a skill. I want to go through each one of them briefly because we will go through it a lot more in the second session, but you should know these five steps as a coach, teaching a drill, teaching an offense, teaching a defense. The first step is the introduction. You tell them what the drill is about, how they're going to do it, th those sort of things. Uh, and then they show them. Usually a good coach should show them so they can see that drill and uh, they can learn from seeing and uh, listening. This is where most United States coaches end. That's it. That's the first step, and they end at the first step. Trust, ask yourself, uh, do you do anything beyond that? You just tell them, show them, and then you run it a few times, and then you forget it. Uh, that's the introduction. The second uh, step is what we call learning. Now that is a long step uh, because you're taking now what has been introduced to you. And in that step, the coach must make corrections, but I would, require, would request that you don't overdo uh, uh, corrections. It muddles the mind. Players should not have much to think about. Uh, they don't need uh, over instruction. Be very careful that you avoid uh, a lot of correction in this, uh, this step. There is one thing in this step though that is very important into the whole uh, entire picture and that is tell the players, don't tell, you, don't tell them this in the first step, the second step it is critical that you uh, tell the players that do not predetermine what you are going to do. Wait till the time is right to do it and then do it from feeling. What feels right to you? I mean, all of this is taking place in just seconds in a game and that's what we're that's where you have to be at, at your very best. But at this step, and not going beyond it yet, uh, is where you get them to 
do, don't predetermine what they're going to do. Let it happen. Uh, and tell them this. I always tell every group I have, you, you will never be wrong. You cannot make a mistake. Follow your feeling. Don't try to predetermine or determine uh, yourself what to do. Let it happen. Uh, you, will, you will find, not at first, but as we do this over and over again, you will find that there is a little bit of a nudge for which, what you should do. You don't need to worry about thinking about it. Players will tell me, uh, I have to, uh, you know, study the opponent. And I always tell them the same thing. Don't, uh, don't try to talk, think through this. Just do it. By the way, it's a good thing for all of us to do. Skill. Here is the part where now the players have skill. You will think they have skill in the first, in the introduction, because they do look good. They can look good after a couple sessions. After a learning session, you will be convinced that they have everything they need. This, if you, if you haven't gotten over the first, by the second, you probably have quit uh, running, the, uh, running the drill. But this is a section where they learn how to do it, and they'll figure out their own ways. Uh, and can continue to tell them, do not predetermine. Continue to tell them, feel it. Because what you're working for is in the skill section. And it's in the skill section of teaching, uh, the, third the third step, uh, where you introduce to them non-thinking. Uh, Many coaches, you know, want their players to think, right? Uh, but they're really putting a harness on those players. Those players need to not think and just do. Just do what they feel like doing. You think they're going to be, uh, you know, you, have, don't, you don't discipline them? Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, they'll discipline themselves. Now they are working on the skill at a higher level for a step. This is one where you get now into the biggies of the business. The, the, the Jordans, the Kobe Bryants, Magic Johnsons uh, that are beyond what is the normal player. Uh, they do it through instincts. Uh, they don't think. If you talk to them, they would tell you that. Uh, they just do it. What, the, what feels right to them, they do. And that's what you're teaching your players. To, uh, so don't impede that teaching by restrictions that you think you need to make or the players will just be lost. Uh, they won't be lost. Uh, th let them take the time that they need for each uh, of these steps. That's automatic. Everything's automatic. It's done. You have learned it in skill. Now you're just doing it. Uh, very big step. The last step is mastery of this, whatever you're doing. But in our case, is, it is in this drill. Uh, and so mastery is where spiritual comes into it. Remember the master sitting quietly thinking? What he was working with was, would be called spirituality. He was inducing it uh, from a source that no one knows. Remember what he said. It was not I that is given credit on that shot. It shot. 
it, it. In other words, something completely away from him, a source. When you can do that, you are in a new world. You are in a high, high world. The drill that I'm going to show you in the next segment is one that I use, I don't know how many years, uh, a long, long time, and I've done it over and over again. Uh, I, I think I know it backwards and forwards, and I do. Uh, it is a perfect drill to teach these five steps. The four, fifth step, the spiritual step. Uh, you probably aren't at this point uh, qualified. Just believe what you read and see in the, in the book, The Intelligent uh, Coach. Now we will be moving towards that screen away drill and we will be incorporating what we have talked about here today. Uh, I can I, I say this without any, uh, you know, without the feeling that I have to impress you with what I do. But there will be a big difference in how I teach that drill and how you would teach it if you hadn't taken this course. Because I've seen so many, many, I've seen, I think, all of coaches, how they operate. And most of them, just say it, practice it a little bit, let it go, and really don't master it. But to have complete mastery, you have to work from a different source. And hopefully by the end of the next one, you will have a feeling about what I'm saying. And when I say to the players, you can't be wrong, uh, I say to you, uh, if you are working from a source different than just the, the literature of it, if you're working for something that you can't even put your fingers on, you work in faith, uh, that is the highest level. Thank you. And I look forward to working with you on the next uh, on the next session. Uh, I hope you listen through all of this. Some of you are very quick to get bored, and and besides, you don't believe what I'm saying anyway, uh, and uh, and don't come back. Uh, you need to come back, and you need this, uh, uh, and I'll help you the most uh, that I can. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.